we have made these messengers excel one another. There are those of them to whom Allah has spoken much, and some of them he has exalted by many degrees of rank. And we gave Jesus, son of Mary, clear arguments, and we supported him with the blessed word of God. Had Allah so willed, people who came after them would not have fought one another particularly after clear arguments had come to them. But as it was, they differed one from another, so that some of them believed while others disbelieved. Had Allah so willed, they would not have fought one another. Yet Allah does whatever He intends. O you who believe, Spend for the cause of Allah out of that which we have provided you with before there comes the day wherein there shall be no buying and selling, nor friendship, nor intercession. Those who refuse to obey this commandment are the real wrongdoers. Allah, there is no other, cannot be, and will never be one worthy of worship but He, the ever-living, self-subsisting, and all sustaining. Slumber overtakes him not, nor sleep. Whatsoever is in the heavens, and whatsoever is in the earth belongs to him. Who is there that will intercede with him, save by his leave? He knows their future and their past, and they encompass nothing of his knowledge, of the things except of such things as he himself pleases to tell. His knowledge and rule extends over the heavens and the earth, and the care of them both tires him not. He is the supreme, the great. There is no compulsion of any sort in religion, as the right way does stand obviously distinguished from the way of error. Now he that shall reject the transgressor and accepts Allah, let such know that he has laid hold of a support firm and strong, which knows no breaking. Allah is all-hearing, all-knowing. Allah is the patron of those who believe. He brings them out of different kinds of darkness, leading them into light. As for those who disbelieve, their patrons are the transgressors. They bring them out of light and lead them into every kind of darkness. It is these who are the fellows of the fire. Therein shall they live for long. Have you not considered the case of him who controversed with Abraham concerning his Lord because Allah had given him kingdom? When Abraham said, My Lord is he who fertilizes the earth and causes desolation, he replied, I do bring about fertility and cause desolation. Abraham said, Allah surely makes the sun rise from the east, so you should make it rise from the west. Thereupon the one who had rejected the faith was completely confounded. Indeed, Allah does not guide the unjust people. Or consider the case of him who passed by a town, and it had fallen in upon its roofs. He said, when will Allah restore this town to life after its destruction? So in his vision, Allah kept him in a state of death for a hundred years. Then he raised him to life. Then Allah said, How long have you stayed in this state of death? He replied, I may have stayed a day or a part of a day. God said, Yes, this too is correct. But as you have witnessed in your vision, you have stayed for a hundred years. Now look at your food and drink. They have escaped the action of time. And look at your donkey too. Years have not passed over it. And we have made you visualize all of this that we may make you a sign to the people. And look at the dead bones, how we set them together and then clothe them with flesh. Thus, when the fact of the matter became clear to him, he said, I know that Allah is the possessor of full power to do all that he will. And recall the time when Abraham said, My Lord, show me how you give life to the dead. 
The Lord said, Do you not believe that I can? He said, Yes, I do. But I ask this, that my mind may be at peace. The Lord said, Take four birds and make them attached to you. Then put them each on a separate hill. Then call them. They will come to you swiftly. And know that Allah is almighty, all wise. The attribute of those who spend their wealth in the cause of Allah is like the attribute of a grain of corn which sprouts seven ears, each ear bearing a hundred grains. And Allah multiplies further for whomsoever he pleases. For Allah is bountiful, all-knowing. Those who spend their wealth in the cause of Allah then follow not up what they have spent with a show of obligation nor with injury. They shall have their reward with their Lord. They shall have no cause of fear nor shall they ever grieve. A fair word and forbearance are better than charity followed by injury. Indeed, Allah is self-sufficient, having no want, ever forbearing. O oh, you who believe, do not render void your charities by a show of obligation and injury, like him who spends his wealth to be seen by people and does not believe in Allah in the last day. So his case is like the case of a smooth rock with some soil thereon. When heavy rain hits it, leaves it bare and hard. They shall not be able to gain anything of what they accomplished. And Allah does not guide such disbelieving people to the way of success. But the case of charity on the part of those who spend their wealth seeking the good pleasure of Allah and for their own consolidation and with firm faith is like the case of a garden situated on a highly fertile land. It is hit by heavy rain, so it yields its fruit manifold. But even if rain does not hit it, then a mere drizzle is sufficient for it, and Allah sees well what you do. Would any one of you wish that while he has a garden of date palm trees and vines served with running streams, he has therein each and every kind of fruit, while he is stricken by old age and has children who are yet feeble, a whirlwind? carrying fire should smite it so that it is all burnt up no not at all thus does allah explain to you his messages so that you may give thought O oh, you who believe spend for the cause of allah a portion of good and pure things that you have yourselves earned and out of that which we have produced for you from the earth do not intend upon spending the bad and inferior. You would spend that bad and inferior for the cause of Allah which you would not accept at all for yourselves unless you connive at it? And know that Allah is self-sufficient, ever praiseworthy. Satan threatens you with poverty and incites you to niggardliness. But Allah promises you forgiveness from himself and affluence. And Allah is bountiful, all-knowing. He grants wisdom to whomsoever he will. Indeed, he who is granted wisdom has been granted an ample good. And none would take heed except those endowed with pure and clear understanding. Whatever things worthy to be spent you spend, and whatever vow for the performance of non-obligatory act of goodness you take, Allah knows it well. As for wrongdoers, they shall have no helpers. If you give your alms openly, it is well and good in itself. But if you keep them secret and give them to the needy, it is better for your own selves, and he will thereby acquit you of some of your evil deeds. Allah is fully aware of what you do. You are not responsible for their guidance to the right path, but Allah guides him who wishes to be guided. Believers, whatever wealth you spend for the cause of Allah, it is to your own good, 
for you do not spend it but to seek the good pleasure of Allah. And whatever wealth you spend in doing good will be fully credited to you, and you shall not be treated unjustly. These charities are meant for those needy who are so confined in the way of Allah that they are unable to move about in the land for providing their sustenance. The person ignorant of their condition thinks them free from want because of their abstaining from begging. But you shall know them by their appearance that they are in need. They do not beg of people with importunity. And whatever good thing you spend for their help, Allah knows it surely well. Those who spend their wealth by night and by day for the cause of Allah, privately and publicly, have their reward with their Lord, they shall have no cause of fear, nor shall they ever grieve. Those who practice usury and interest, their condition is such as they will not be able to stand, except like the standing of one who has lost his reason under the influence of Satan. That is so because they say, trade is just like usury and interest. Whereas Allah has made trade lawful, and made interest unlawful. Then whosoever has received this admonition from his Lord, and keeps away from usury and interest, he may keep whatever interest he has taken in the past. His matter rests with Allah. As for those who revert to the practice of usury and interest, it is these who are the fellows of the fire. Therein shall they live for long. Allah annuls usury and interest and promotes charity. Allah does not love any persistent and confirmed disbeliever and an arch sinner. Verily those who believe and do deeds of righteousness and regularly observe the prayer and go on presenting the zakat shall have their reward with their Lord. They shall have no cause of fear nor shall they ever grieve. O you who believe, take Allah as a shield and forego all outstanding gains from usury and interest if you are indeed believers. But if you do it not, then beware of war from Allah and his messenger. But if you turn away from such an unlawful transaction, then you shall have your principal without interest back. Thus you shall neither deal unjustly nor be dealt with unjustly. If any debtor be in straitened circumstances, there shall be respite for him till his circumstances ease. But that if you remit the debt by way of charity for the sake of God, it is better for you if you only knew. And guard yourself against the evil of the day when you shall be made to return to Allah then every soul shall be paid in full for what it has accomplished, and no injustice shall be done to them. O you who believe, when you transact a loan for a stipulated term, then write it down. Let a scribe write it in your presence in terms of equity and fairness. The scribe shall not refuse to write it down, since it is Allah who taught him to write. Right he must, and let him upon whom the liability dictate and let him observe his duty to Allah, his Lord, nor should he depreciate anything what he owes from it. But if the person upon whom the liability is be of feeble mind or is infirm or he is incapable of dictating himself, then let someone who can watch his interests dictate in terms of equity and fairness and call in to witness the transaction two male witnesses from amongst your men but if there be not two males available then let there be one male and two females such as you approve as witnesses to bear witness so that if either of the two women forget then one may remind the other and let the witnesses not refuse to give evidence whenever they are summoned, and never feel weary of writing it. Whether it the debt be small or large, along with the time of its payment being due, this way is more just in the sight of Allah 
and ensures a more upright evidence and is more likely to prevent your falling into doubts. So write it down, except you carry ready trade and transfer the merchandise from hand to hand. In that case, there shall be no blame on you that you do not write the transaction, yet have witnesses when you trade with one another. Let neither the scribe nor the witness be harmed, and if you do any such thing, then that indeed is disobedience on your part. Take Allah as a shield, with the result that Allah will grant you knowledge, for Allah has perfect knowledge of everything. And if you be on a journey, and do not find a scribe, then let there be a pledge with possession of some article to secure your debt. If one of you entrust something to another, let him who is entrusted deliver his trust and let him take Allah his Lord as a shield. Do not conceal the evidence, for whoso conceals it, his heart is certainly sinful. Allah is well aware of all that you do. To Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens, and whatever is in the earth, and whatever you reveal, that which is in your minds, or conceal it. Allah will call you to account according to it. Then he will protect whomsoever he will, and he will punish whomsoever he will. And Allah is possessor of full power to do all he will. The messenger believes in what has been revealed to him by his Lord, and so do the faithfuls. Everyone believes in Allah, his angels, his books, and his messengers. And the faithful declare we make no distinction in believing between any of his messengers. They say, Lord, we have heard your commandments, and we are obedient. Grant us your protection, our Lord, for to you is the returning. Allah charges no soul but to its capacity. It shall be paid for that which it has done of good, and against it who has incurred evil deliberately. Pray, our Lord, take us not to task if we forget or if we make a mistake. Our Lord, lay not upon us the burden of disobedience as you laid upon those before us. Our Lord, charge us not with the responsibility which we have not the strength to bear. Therefore, overlook our faults and grant us protection and have mercy on us. You are our master, therefore help us against the disbelieving people. Ali Imran, family of Amran, with the name of Allah, the most gracious, the ever merciful. Alif Lam Mim, I am Allah, the all-knowing. Allah is He, there is no other, cannot be and will never be one worthy of worship but He. He is the living, the self-subsisting, and all-sustaining. He has revealed to you gradually this perfect book, which meets all your requirements, fulfilling that which preceded it, and which still remain. He revealed the Torah and the Evangel before this, as a guidance of the people and he has revealed the Qur'an as the criterion of judgment between truth and falsehood. Those who deny the revelations of Allah, there surely awaits them a severe punishment. Mighty is Allah, the Lord of retribution. As to Allah, verily nothing in this earth nor in the space above is hidden from his view. He it is who fashions you in the wombs as he will. There is no other, cannot be, and will never be one worthy of worship but he, the Almighty, the All-Wise. He it is who has revealed to you this perfect book. Some of its verses are definite and decisive. They are the basic root conveying the established meanings of the book and other verses are susceptible to various interpretations. 
As for those in whose hearts is perversity, they follow verses that are susceptible to different interpretations, seeking to cause dissension and seeking an interpretation of their own choice. But no one knows its true interpretation except Allah and those who are firmly grounded in knowledge. They say, we believe in it. It is all the basic and decisive verses as well as the allegorical ones from our Lord. And none take heed except those endowed with pure and clear understanding. Our Lord, they pray, let not our hearts become perverse after you have guided us and grant us from your own self special mercy, for you alone are the most liberal bestower. Our Lord, you are invariably going to assemble all humankind on the day about the advent of which there is no doubt. Surely Allah never breaks his word. As to those who disbelieve, neither their possessions nor their children shall avail them at all against the punishment of Allah, and it is they that will be the fuel of the fire. Their conduct is like the conduct of the followers of Pharaoh and those before them. They cried lies to our messages, so that Allah took them to task for their sins. Allah is severe in retribution. Say to those who disbelieve, You shall soon be overcome and gathered together to be driven towards Jehenna. What an evil abode it is! There has already been for you a remarkable sign in the two armies that encountered each other in the battle of Badr. Behold, one army is fighting in the cause of Allah, and the other is an army of disbelievers, whom they, the Muslims, saw with their naked eyes twice as many. And Allah strengthens with his help whomsoever he will. Verily in this is a lesson for those who have eyes. It has been made fair-seeming to the people the love of the desired things comprising women, sons, stored up heaps of gold and silver, well-bred horses, cattle, and tilth. That is the provision of the present life, whereas with Allah is the fairest goal of life. Say, Shall I inform you of something better than these? There are with their Lord gardens served with running streams for those who become secure against evil. There they shall abide for ever, and there will be the righteous companions perfectly purified, and above all they will enjoy the good pleasure of Allah. And Allah is mindful of his servants who say, Our Lord, we have certainly believed, therefore protect us against the consequences of our sins and save us from the punishment of the fire. And those who are patiently persevering, the truthful and the obedient, and those who spend liberally in the cause of Allah, and the implorers of divine protection in the latter part of the night and from the core of their hearts. Allah bears witness that there is no other, cannot be, and will never be one worthy of worship but He, and so do the angels and those possessed of true knowledge, maintaining justice. There is no other, cannot be, and will never be one worthy of worship but He, the Almighty, the All-Wise. Decidedly, the true faith acceptable to Allah is Islam. Those who were given the scripture were not at variance except after the knowledge had come to them. Their differences were due to mutual envy and to spite one another. And whoso denies the messages of Allah should bear in mind that then Allah indeed is quick at reckoning. But if they dispute with you, say, I have completely submitted myself to the will and guidance of Allah, and so have those who follow me. And say to those who had been given the scripture and to the unlettered, Have you also submitted yourselves? 
Indeed, they will be following true guidance if they submit themselves to the will of God. But if they turn back, then your responsibility is only to convey the message. Allah is ever watchful of his servants. Surely those who deny the messages of Allah and seek to kill the prophets without a just cause and slay those among the people who enjoin equity and justice announce to them a grievous punishment. It is they whose deeds go in vain in this world and in the hereafter and they shall have none to help them. Have you not considered the case of those who were given a portion of the scripture? When they are called to the book of Allah, that it may judge between them, yet a party of them turn away in sheer aversion. They do so because they say, the fire will not even brush us except for a limited number of days. Their own lies that they used to forge have deluded them in the matter of their faith. Then how will they fare when we gather them together for the day about the advent of which there is no doubt, and when every soul shall be paid in full for what it has accomplished, and they shall not be dealt with unjustly? Say, O oh Allah, the Lord of all power, you grant power to whomsoever you will, and you take away power from whomsoever you please and confer honor and dignity on whomsoever you will, and disgrace whomsoever you will. All good lies in your hand. Verily, you are the possessor of full power to do all you will. You cause the night to merge into the day, and cause the day to merge into the night, and bring forth the living from the dead, and bring forth the dead from the living and provide all sorts of provisions to whomsoever you will without measure. Let not the believers take the disbelievers for allies in preference to the believers unless you very carefully guard against evil from them. Indeed, he who acts likewise in a careless manner, let him remember he has nothing to do with Allah, and Allah cautions you against his punishment for to Allah is the eventual returning. Say, whether you conceal that which is in your bosoms or whether you reveal it, Allah knows it, and he knows whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth. Allah is the possessor of full power to do all that he will. Beware of the day when every soul shall be confronted with what good it has done, and similarly, whatever it has done of evil, it will earnestly wish there would be a long distance between it and between that. Allah cautions you against his punishment, and Allah is most compassionate to his servants. Say, follow me if you love Allah. If you do so, Allah will love you and grant you protection from your sins. Allah is great protector, ever merciful. Say, Obey Allah and this perfect messenger. But if they turn away, then remember that Allah does not love the disbelievers. Truly, Allah chose Adam, Noah, and the family of Abraham, and the family of Amran, above all peoples of the time. They are a lineage correlated with one another. Allah is all hearing, all knowing. Allah listened when a woman of the family of Amran said, My Lord, I do hereby vow to you what is in my womb to be dedicated to your service. So do accept it of me. You alone are the all hearing, the all knowing. But when she gave birth to it, she said, My Lord, I have given birth to a female. Allah knew best what she had given birth to. And the male she was thinking of was not like this female she had brought forth. I have named her Mary, and I do commend her to your protection 
and also her offspring to be saved from Satan the accursed. So her Lord accepted her with a gracious acceptance and made her grow into an excellent form and assigned her to the care of Zachariah. Every time Zachariah visited her in the chamber, he found her with her provisions. He said, From where do you get all this, O Mary? She replied with all conscientiousness, It is from Allah. Verily Allah provides whomsoever he will without measure. Then and there did Zachariah pray to his Lord, saying, My Lord, grant me by your own grace pure and pious descendant. You alone are indeed the hearer of prayers. So the angels called to him as he stood praying in the sanctuary. Allah bears you the glad tidings of John, who shall confirm the word of God, and who shall be noble, utterly chaste, a prophet from among the righteous. Lord, he said, how shall I have a son, now that old age has already come upon me and my wife is barren? The Lord said, such are the ways of Allah. He does what he will. He said, my Lord, give me some instruction. The Lord said, The instruction for you is that you shall not speak to the people for three days and nights, except by gestures, and remember your Lord a good deal and glorify him in the evening and early in the morning. Recall the time when the angel said, O Mary, surely Allah has chosen you and has rid you of all impurities and has preferred you to the women of all contemporary people. O Mary, be devout to your Lord, and prostrate yourself, and bow along with the congregation of the worshippers of God. These are some of the important accounts of the things unseen we have revealed to you. You were not present with them when they, the priests, cast their quills to decide as to which of them should have Mary in his charge to arrange her marriage. And you were not with them when they, the exalted assembly of the angels, were engaged in a discussion over the issue of Muhammad being entrusted with the divine mission. Recall the time when the angels said, O Mary, Allah gives you good tidings through a prophetic word from him about the birth of a son, whose name is the Messiah, Jesus. Son of Mary, he shall be worthy of regard in this world and in the hereafter and one of the nearest ones to him. And he will speak to the people when in the cradle as a child and when of old age and shall be of the righteous. She said, My Lord, how can I and whence shall I have a child while no man has yet touched me? The Lord said, Such are the ways of Allah. He creates what he will. When he decrees a thing, he simply commands it be, and it comes to be. The angels continued, And he will teach him the art of writing and reading, and the wisdom of the Torah and the Evangel. And he will appoint him a messenger to the children of Israel, with the message, I have come to you with a sign from your Lord. I have come so that I determine for your benefit from clay, a person, after the manner of a bird. Then I shall breathe into him a new spirit, so that he becomes a flyer, a spiritual person, by the authority of Allah. And I absolve the blind and the leprous, and I quicken the spiritually dead by the authority of Allah and I inform you as to what you should eat and what you should store in your houses. Behold, these facts shall surely serve you as a definite sign if you are believers. And I come confirming that which is before me, namely the Torah, and that I declare lawful for you some of the things that had been forbidden to you. I come to you with a sign from your Lord, so take Allah as a shield and obey me. Surely Allah is my Lord as well as your Lord, 
therefore worship him. This is the right path. But when Jesus felt disbelief on their part and thought his people would renounce him, he said, Who are my helpers in calling the people towards Allah? The disciples said, We are the helpers in the cause of Allah. We have believed in Allah. Bear witness that we are the submitting ones to his will. The disciples then prayed, Our Lord, we believe in that which you have revealed, and we follow this messenger, so count us with the witnesses of the truth. And they, the persecutors of Jesus, planned to crucify him, and Allah planned to save him, and Allah is the best of the planners. Recall the time when Allah said, O Jesus, I will cause you to die a natural death, and will exalt you to myself, and I will clear you of the unchaste accusations of those who disbelieve. I am going to make your followers prevail over the disbelievers till the day of resurrection. Then to me, O people, shall be your return, and I will judge all of your differences. Then as for those who disbelieve, I will punish them sternly in this world and in the hereafter, and they shall have no helpers. As for those who believe and do deeds of righteousness, he will pay them their rewards in full. Allah loves not the unjust. That is what we recite to you, the messages and the reminder full of wisdom. Verily the case of Jesus is as the case of Adam in the sight of Allah. He fashioned him out of dust. Then he said to him, Be, and he came to be. O reader, this is the real truth from your Lord. Hence do not be of the disputers at all. Now whoso disputes with you in this matter of Jesus, after there has come to you true knowledge, then say to him, Come, let us summon our sons and your sons, our women and your women, and our people and your people. Then let us pray fervently one against the other and invoke the disapproval of Allah upon the liars. Verily, this which we have told is certainly the true account. There is no other, cannot be, and will never be one worthy of worship but Allah. And surely it is Allah who is the Almighty, the All-Wise. But if they turn away, then remember that Allah, of course, knows the mischief-makers. Say, O people of the Scripture, let us agree to a proposition common to us both, that we worship none but Allah, and that we associate no partner with Him, and that some of us shall not hold others as lords besides Allah. But if they turn away refusing, say, Bear witness that we are the only submitting ones to one God. O people of the scripture, why do you argue about Abraham while the Torah and the Evangel were not revealed till after him? Have you no sense? Behold, you are such as have argued about that whereof you have a little knowledge. Now why do you argue about that whereof you have no knowledge at all? Indeed, Allah knows the truth, while you do not. Abraham was neither a Jew nor a Christian, but he was upright, who had submitted to the will of God, and he was not one of the polytheists. The people nearest to Abraham are surely those who followed him in the days of his prophethood, and this prophet, and those who believe in him. Indeed, Allah is the patron of the believers. Believers, a section of the people of the scripture would fain lead you astray. And it is only the people like themselves that they lead astray, only they perceive not. O people of the scripture, why do you deny the revelations of Allah while you are witnessing their truth? O people of the scripture, why do you confound the truth with falsehood 
and conceal truth, and that too deliberately. A section of the people of the scripture said to their companions in confidence, Avow belief in that which has been revealed to the believers in the early hours of the day, and deny it in the latter part of it, so that they, the newly converted Muslims, may return to disbelief. Yet avow this belief only for the sake of those who follow your creed. Say, Surely the true guidance is Allah's guidance. And they also said, Do not believe that any one will ever be given the like of that gift of prophethood which you have been given, or that they will ever be able to prevail upon you in argument before your Lord. Say, Eminence of prophethood and sovereignty is entirely in the hands of Allah. He confers it to whomsoever he will. And Allah is all-embracing, all-knowing. Allah has singled out for his grace of the bestowal of divine revelation, one whom he has pleased, for Allah is the Lord of great eminence. And among the people of the scripture, there is he who, if you trust him with a huge treasure, he will surrender it to you. Yet there is another among them, that if you entrust him with a single dinar, he will not surrender it to you unless you keep on pressing him. They do that because they say, we are not liable to be called to account in the matter of the unlettered. And they tell a lie in the name of Allah deliberately. Nay, they will indeed be called to account. Yet whoso discharges his obligations and guards against evil, he will find that Allah, in fact, loves those who guard against evil. On the contrary, those who take paltry gains for shaking off their covenant with Allah and their oaths, it is these for whom there shall be no big share in the hereafter. Allah will never speak to them lovingly, nor look at them with affection on the day of resurrection nor will he treat them as pure. There awaits them a woeful punishment. There are some among them who twist their tongues while reciting their scripture, that you may think that what they recite is a part of the scripture, whilst it is no part of the scripture. And they say, This is from Allah, whereas it is not from Allah. They tell a lie in the name of Allah deliberately. It is not given to a human being that Allah should give him the book, the sovereignty, and the prophethood, and then he should say to the people, Be servants to me besides Allah. He would rather say, Be you the sole devotees of Allah, the Lord, for you teach the book and because you study it. Nor would it be possible for him that he bid you take the angels and prophets as your lords. Would he bid you disbelieve after you have submitted yourselves? Recall the time when Allah bound the people to a covenant through the prophets, saying, Indeed, whatever I have vouchsafed to you of the book and the wisdom, and then there comes to you a messenger fulfilling that which is with you, you shall surely believe in him and have to help him. The Lord further said, Do you agree and do you undertake the heavy responsibility of my covenant on these terms? They said, We do agree. God said, Bear witness to it, and I am with you among the witnesses. Now those who turn away and break their pledge after this will be the real transgressors. Do they then seek a creed other than Allah's? while all those that are in the heavens and on the earth submit to him willingly or unwillingly, and to him they shall be made to return? Say, We believe in Allah, and in that which has been revealed to us, and in that which was revealed to Abraham, and Ismail, and Isaac, and Jacob, and his children, and in that which was given to Moses, and Jesus, and to all other prophets from their Lord. 
we make no distinction between any one of them in believing them, and to him alone do we submit. And whosoever seeks a faith other than Islam, it will never be accepted from him, and he shall be of the losers in the hereafter. How is Allah to guide a people who renounce their faith after having accepted it, and after testifying to the truth of the messenger, and after clear and sound proofs had come to them? And Allah never guides a people who cannot discriminate between right and wrong. It is these whose recompense is that the disapproval of Allah shall be upon them, and that of the angels and of the people altogether. They shall abide there for long. Their punishment shall not be reduced, nor shall they be reprieved. Accept those who repent after this and make amends. Such will find that surely Allah is the great protector ever merciful. Verily those who chose disbelief after they had believed, and then go on increasing in disbelief, their repentance shall not be accepted, and these are the people who are completely lost. Verily, as to those who have disbelieved, and die while they are disbelievers, there shall not be accepted from any one of them even an earth full of gold if he would ransom himself thereby. There awaits them a woeful punishment. They shall have no helpers either. Never shall you attain the highest state of virtue unless you spend in the cause of Allah, out of that which you love, and whatever you spend, Allah indeed knows it well.